For anyone unfamiliar with the game, Earthbound, the second entry in the series, sees you take control of Ness, or whatever you care to name him, as you travel the land searching for eight melodies to help defeat the universal cosmic destroyer Gigas. It's an RPG but with a modern, well, 199x American-influenced setting, where vehicles are on the roads, department stores are visited, burgers restore health, cash is withdrawn from ATMs and, should a member of your party fall in battle, there are hospitals. A large part of Earthbound's appeal is the story. It entertains right from the start, with your mother happy to let you wander off into the night to investigate a crashed meteor because, after all, you'd only sneak out if she said, no. Soon you encounter a bee-like creature from the future named Buzz Buzz and the adventure begins. Things get wackier as you progress whether talking to a dog, being possessed by the spirit of the game designer, or battling a group of policemen so they'll remove the roadblock to allow you to pass from opening town on it to Tucson. We got this name because we weren't first. Naturally the following towns are Threed and Foreside, although there are plenty of other locations, too, and you'll battle a range of characters and creatures along the way such as coil snakes, annoying old party men, mad ducks and a big pile of puke. No, really. There's a lot of game here to keep you occupied, too with events unfolding at a relaxed pace as you move from one to the next and do turn-based battle with enemies you encounter on the way. In battle you can choose to attack, cast spells using your PSI ability or use the goods in your inventory. And if you feel your team is strong enough you can select the auto-fight command and let nature take its course. The game has lengthy sections not really suited for quick bursts of play, and you'll likely welcome the suspension, restore point functions if you're playing on a platform with them. It's handy to tackle the game in whatever sized chunks you feel like, and quickly repeat any battles in the late game which can get pretty demanding. There's a sense that Earthbound was ahead of its time in many ways. Once you level up sufficiently, the game doesn't force you into boring low-level encounters. In fact, enemies scarper when they see you and you can even defeat them instantly by ambushing them from behind. While the pacing can be a little up and down in places, the game respects your time and intelligence in a way that many titles of its era didn't. Your character's hit point counter rolls down slowly, so even if you suffer more damage than you have hit points to withstand, you can still quickly heal yourself before the counter reaches zero and avoid falling in battle. Little touches like this give the game its unique, defining, and utterly irresistible character. Conclusion for those who never got to experience the game back in the 90s there was always the chance that Earthbound was overhyped bobbins, a game that couldn't possibly live up to its reputation as a quirky, 16-bit masterpiece. However, as so many have discovered in the years since it's become more widely available, Mother 2, as the coolest kids call it, is still a touching, engaging, genuinely brilliant adventure to go on, a lengthy experience that's wonderfully humorous and fun from start to finish. It remains an absolute must-play for any Nintendo fan and fortunately it's much easier to play nowadays than it was for a long time. If you've never had the pleasure, get stuck in immediately and finally understand why bands of fans won't pipe down about Mother 3.